Hey, y'all. I just sat here and recorded this whole thing. Talked about 20 minutes and it didn't record. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, I'm annoyed. It's really TT. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So I'm going to let y'all in and let y'all know what happened when I went to the IEP appointment. Um, <sighs> so when I got out here from um, Texas, I literally had to get on the ball to get my son some support. He was getting support in Texas, but it was virtually and it was through a behavior specialist and a speech therapist. And because it was virtual, um, it really did not, it, it wasn't really helping. It was always in the evenings and it just didn't work. So when I got out here, I um, met an eye doctor who was Lebon.com. I was able to get him. I, I, I'm actually thankful for my eye doctor, for my son, because when I tell you that when we went to the appointment the very first time he um he came in he said hello he was like we're just gonna hang out he was like tell me about your son so it was just like a meeting um i told him that my son um is on the spectrum so he under he instantly understood what was going on now i looked up on this optometrist because i had no you know i'm new to all of this so i feel like I'm, I'm, I have to get into the frame of explaining to people, you know, what's going on with my son. Like if you say hi to him, he may wave to you, but he won't speak that type of deal. Right. And if he doesn't know you, he may not wave. Or if he feels like you're in his personal space, he may back up a little bit. So the eye, eye doctor automatically knew what was going on. So he actually got in contact. He has a a colleague well he knows someone um that actually is in the school district which is great he placed a few calls um for me to give me some support um i told him a little bit more about hezekiah and um he was fitting him for his glasses he did determine that hezekiah needed a prescription and i felt so bad because my son's three this whole time my baby was not able to freaking see <sighs> Yeah, they wasn't able to see. Didn't even know that, right? So, he got a prescription. Um, no, the first time he needed a prescription, he just wanted Hezekiah to get comfortable with actually being there because he, that's what I really, really appreciate about him um, wanting to make sure that Hezekiah was was comfortable. He said that he didn't want to be in his personal space because he needs to invite him to his personal space. And I'm just like, okay, you know, well, you know, thank you for being mindful, you know, with that because he wanted to build that, you know, that trust with Hezekiah so that he can get a correct prescription. So he did determine the first visit that Hezekiah needed a prescription, but he wanted a better reading. So he was like, I'm going to have you come back. Um, he scheduled me for another uh, appointment. And by that time, he reached out to a couple more people for me, which was great. And I ended up getting a call from the school district because I've been trying to get in contact with the school district um, through the pandemic. And everybody's so behind and backed up that, you know, it was taking forever, but the optometrist, kudos to him, he was able to, you know, push some things through for me. And they actually ended up calling me literally the next day, which was great. They called me and I had a meeting um, over the phone. I told them a little bit about Hezekiah. Um, excuse my hand. You all know that I got burned. So you may see it. <laughs> but um, he he had an appointment to go for his IEP. IEP, Individualized Educational Program. So... What that took for me, it took for me to really 
to say, okay, you know, this is what it is. You know, you already know your son needs some support. We're going to get him some support. I said I was going to do it and I did it. Okay. All right. So it was going to be four days, two and a half hours, um, 8 a.m. to 10.30. I had no idea um, what to expect. I was a little nervous. Now, I I don't think I've mentioned to you all before, but this is new for my family. Like um, my little sister, KK, y'all know KK. Y'all seen in my chat before. She's a mom when she does get a chance to come around. Um, her oldest son, um, you can follow him, Daniel's Path of Life on Instagram. He is nonverbal and um, he's, he is um, on the autistic. Um, and so, like I said, this is new for all of us. Um yeah, so um, I've, I've had experience being around Daniel. So for me, it was more of an eye opener to, you know, to see and just know, know the signs of, you know, for my son. So literally, um, we got there as about 12, 12 kids that was waiting outside the gate with me and Hezekiah with their parents. And then we walked to this classroom and it was six other kids that was, it was like already a classroom already going on. So it was circle time, a special ed teacher, a speech therapist, behavior therapist, psychologist, um, a nurse, cognitive and behavioral, did I say that already? And like two other therapists with like uh, four pairs, right? Okay. Mind you, still doing COVID. So we all had to wear masks, which we still do. And literally everybody was writing notes, taking notes down, taking notes down. So that they moved through different stations. It was like a like a, a lab or assembly line, pretty much. So after that, um, it was, I think the first time, the first day Hezekiah was there, he didn't really, you know, he hadn't been in school in like for like two years. So since like 2019. So he was just been with me the whole time. Yeah, he plays my niece and my nephews, but, you know, being in the classroom, something different. So the circle time, about four minutes out of 20 he was done like that was it <laughs> he was like nah I'm cool so I had to take my side get some fresh air come back inside by that time we went to another station and it was like pretty much sharing toys with people like putting little blocks together and stuff like that so it was a lot <sighs> being around children that had meltdowns um, children who were not able to, you know, sit down, um, a lot of redirecting and re reinforcing. Um, my son has a tendency to play by himself. He's an introvert. Um, and he play, you know, he's a, he's an introvert. That's he plays by himself. I believe that's one of the personalities or behaviors of a child that's on the spectrum. He loves cars. If you all haven't realized that or not, but my son loves cars. He loves cars. He will. He loves cars. That's it. That's all. He's infatuated with cars. So, yeah. So, for me, going through the process, I don't, it was it was okay. I, I, it was just a lot of people that were just around me taking notes, um, which is something I knew they, they needed to do. So sometimes uh, a therapist will pull your child aside or take them to the classroom to talk and to work on an activity, which is fine. So the third day we were there, everything was going smoothly and this lady came in and she was writing notes. I think I seen her on the first day, but that was about it. But we didn't talk directly to each other. She was talking to another parent, took them, and that was that. So she was writing, 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 looking at Hezekiah, writing, 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 writing. So then she came to me and she was like, Hi, so tell me about. Um, it's, she used another child's name. Now, I don't want to say his name because of the privacy or whatever, but tell me about that, you know, about Wumpty Woom's name, uh, Wumpty Woom, and tell me about, you know, their trauma. And I was like, excuse me she's like yeah she was looking through stuff she was like he had right and she, and i was like no that's not that's not my son and then she was flipping through paperwork she was like oh you're not such and such i was like no i'm not mm -mm -mm. so she walked out <laughs> walked back in like 10 minutes later got the right file Ooh, special. I don't know. I'm, mm. 
eat, whatever, got the right file and was going over the notes and stuff like, I say, Lord, what happened to clarifying before you actually, I, I don't know. I'm not going to tell somebody else how to do their job or whatever. So, <laughs> um, the last day, I guess they really didn't need to test as much, but they wanted to see how Hezekiah did. Cause they know, they know that he's infatuated with toys. So they put the toys, purposely put the toys out and with the cars and had him to do other activities but my son is really drawn to cars he loves cars it was so challenging to have them have him work on another activity because they had the cars there and they did it on purpose they didn't want to put the cars away and i'm just like you know whatever i'm just go you know just let it let it do its thing so then after that, that was it. That was that. So I had to wait about 30 days for the IEP meeting. The IEP meeting was a hot mess. The first one, the uh, therapist who was supposed to be facilitating it, she called me about 20 minutes beforehand and she was like, I'm not going to be able to make it. Can we go over our part now? And I'm like, I was actually doing something for work. And I'm like, can I call you being like, like maybe like, I don't know, like 15 minutes because the meeting was in 20. I was doing something for, you know, I'm, I got stuff I'm trying to do. I ended up calling her back in like three minutes, literally three minutes. And she was like, oh, you know, they'll go, they'll go over it with you. I'm doing a meeting. And I was just like, whatever. So fine. I'm not going to beg people for their time that, you know, maybe hopefully, you know, through the meeting, they'll just, you know, they'll give me all the information. So we get to the meeting. I have a family there. The person that was facilitating, I've never seen her before. It was all virtual. She didn't have nothing to do with my child. And I guess the, the, the file got thrown into her lap at the last minute, right? So she's very blunt, very standoffish. Uh, she made the uh, only three people out of the 12 people that were working. Um, only three of them showed up which I felt was kind of unfair because we can't really go over everything, you know, because people were not there. So the facilitator was making the whole staff feel uncomfortable. She was just directly rude. Um, didn't want to be there. I'm professional. Uh, every time somebody would say something, propose something, she'll be like, if that's what the mother wants to do. It would just say it like that. And I just looked at her <laughs> I said, good girl, you better let me talk about my baby because we ain't got no time to play no games here. So then um, it was proposed that um, for me that we go over each section because how am I supposed to sign off on an IEP? I, we got, I got, listen, the lady at my church gave me a whole list because she works at the school district and parents have rights, parent rights, and also safeguard. So that's good to know. So I have a right to go over the whole IEP. I have a right. That's my right. She didn't want to do all of that. Um, <clears throat> which I I mean, I understand, but her delivery was way off. She should have just said, hey, you know what? Let's go over this. I have not read this file. I just got this file. I'm gonna do the best I can. You know, if if it's not sufficient enough, then we'll have to, you know, reschedule. She didn't want to, she was trying to hurry up and go through the meeting. She didn't want to be there. So each time she referred to Hezekiah, she would say the child, the child. And I started saying Hezekiah. And then she kept saying the child failed to do this. The ch I said, Hezekiah, the child failed to Hezekiah. Like you're not going to, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Like that's what we're, we're not going to do. So she was trying to make us feel uncomfortable, but I'm not going to feel uncomfortable when I'm trying to get information from my child. So it got to the point to where she had got quiet. She didn't really want to say nothing else. So the special education teacher, the one that did attend, she was the one, it was actually her classroom because she was able to see everything that was going on while she was facilitating her class. She said, I propose that we reschedule the meeting to a day when all therapists, teachers, counselors that were there to uh, review and assess Hezekiah, you know, so that way it'll be flow better. And I said, thank you. That's all I wanted. You know, I, I, I feel like that that's fair. You know, I'm not asking for too much. I didn't come into this rudely. 
I came into this open minded. I didn't really say as much because I felt like I was trying to get it was more for me as a learning experience. You know, I was trying to learn. This is something new for me. Um, so the person who was supposed to facilitate, uh, oh, wait. So when the special ed- education teacher had said that, when she proposed that, lady gonna say, if that's what the mother wants to do. I almost told her my name <laughs> because she was trying to take me there. And I'm like, Lord, I'm not trying to go there with this lady. It's not worth it. I'm not stupid to her level because she got to look at herself in the mirror. I'm, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. She got to look at herself in the mirror. And when it's like, it's, it's crazy because you have to be careful how you treat people. And especially because Hezekiah is not able to communicate to me if somebody is, is doing something to him. He can't verbally tell me. Hezekiah has only said about five words. And if he doesn't like someone, not like if he doesn't really care for someone, he he won't go to them. He will, mm-mm, he'll say, mm-mm, or he'll do that. So no. So I ended up getting another meeting, which was more smoothly. Um, more family came, which was great. Um, I have a cousin who's a retired speech therapist. She was present as well, too. Um, like I said, my parents was there. My little sister, KK, was there. I think, uh, no, three or four of my, four of my, four, five of my, four of my sisters were there. And I had my cousin was there and one of my best friends was there as well, too. So I had a whole panel you know, folks and support. Um, it was, it it was a better experience. I did sign off on a second one because I knew that I needed support. I knew that I needed to give my son some help. I just needed to understand what I was signing off on. I need all of us to have an understanding of what you all saw, what what you assessed, what the expectation are, expectations are, and how you're going to help, you know, Hezekiah get to the next step. You know, we don't know where Hezekiah is, is going to be capable of doing or not capable of doing, but we're going to help him as much as we can. So, I mean, I have a lot of worries. Of course I do. It's not, you know, to worry on purpose, but um, as a single mom and I have a, a black boy, I'm a mother of a black boy, a mother of a black girl. I got black kids. You know, it's a lot going on out here in this world and it's, it's, it's even more fearful and scary because right now, and it may be even long term or for life, that my son is on a spectrum. So, I mean, I, you know, that's, that's a worry. So I had to prepare myself. I had to, well, I've always had life insurance. Um, I got long term care. I got long term care. Um, I think I got it before I got pregnant with my daughter. So I still have that. Um, I have my retirement. And my children have life insurance as well, too. So if anything happens to me, you know, they'll be taken care of. I also had to work out a plan in case an event, something happened to me where I'm no longer on this earth. I had to get that set as well, too, because, you know, I don't want my children. They will never go to the system. Knock on wood, but, you know, I had to put it out there and say, this is who I want to raise my children in the event that I'm not no longer going to be here. So, you know, these are the things that... I do worry um, about sometimes, but, uh, you know, as long as I'm being, you know, proactive and, you know, I'm being productive, making sure I'm getting him some support. The good thing out of all of this is that I can say is that Hezekiah has been doing good in school. Um, Repetition, redirecting. I know they do a lot of that in class. Uh, He likes his teacher. He likes the pairs as well, too. Um, So... He's actually where they did the the testing is not he's not at the actual school is at another location, which is great. He does go to a um, um, daycare as well, too, which helps. So he gets like a balance. And, you know, I, I'm just doing things so that I can, you know, I'm doing my part as a parent. I'm doing my part as a mom. You know, I just want to make sure that both of my children are taken care of because my parents was at the school all the time. I told you, I got six sisters and three brothers. My parents didn't play. They still don't play. So we can't do nothing at the school. We can't even step out of line. Okay? We can't do nothing. Like, literally, like, I think when I was in high school, y'all know, I didn't really do too much in high school. Well, you know. But when I got to high school, I thought I was grown. <laughs> but my the principal had my mom on speed dial. <laughs> 
because they have they have a good relationship but they, they still talk to this day but um yeah i just mm -mm, no and that's one thing I, I be on my kids like i'm a single mom i got you know my children i'm not about to have this school call me because y'all acting crazy no y'all about to act right y'all about to listen you know and that's why i'm so um so hard on trying to focus on getting this, this this stuff accomplished now so where at the end of the day you know it's already set we got this we in a routine you are hezekiah you already know what's expected of you you know what we're doing what we're not doing and even lariah you know what you're supposed to be doing what we're not supposed to be doing like no we're in this together we're gonna rock this out so that is my take my experience on hezekiah's iep and he got his progress report and I can say in some areas he has improved drastically. I am so happy. I'm so proud of my son. It's like little milestones here and there. Like I said, he's only saying maybe about he's only said about five words. He's not it's not repetitive. Um, which is okay. There's other forms of ways to communicate. He can write sign language. He, there's a tablet out there, but I'm gonna let him I'm gonna let him show me how he how he's going to communicate if that makes sense i'm going to let him do him in in his own way so i'm just going that's how we going to do it. i'm going to let him do it his own way so that's you know information from hezzy's world and um i will see y'all soon thanks so much for supporting me thank you so much for liking sharing subscribing and commenting i will see y'all soon i'm out bye y'all